Even though I've never been there, y'all know I mess with Haiti heavy. They don't take no bull crap at all. And news medias ain't covering this. Y'all probably don't even know. TikTok, hear me loud and clear. This is for educational purposes only. There is revolutionary protesting happening in Haiti right now for the same things that we're going through in America and we not doing nothing about it. This is real life today. They're protesting because the cost of living has increased, the lack of jobs and the basic necessities like clean drinking water. And if ISIS wisdom wouldn't have pointed out, I probably wouldn't even know what's going on. There are gangs there that are raiding and killing neighborhoods. They have no say so of who speaks and is in control of the country because other countries are involved with governing them. As you can see, the sent armed vehicles to fight against gangs, basically the protesters. Because not to mention they're throwing tear gas, 200 plus people have been killed, shot and bodies even burnt. Just from protesting. We're not even going to mention the raids of people being killed in their neighborhoods by these gangs. But the protesters are saying that the gangs who have the guns were given to them by the government. Listen to somebody who was speaking about the issues in Haiti. And out of his own words, he was saying that the government was giving underprivileged people in bad neighborhoods to join the gangs. Ain't that the same situation that's happening to us? No jobs, cost of living going up. Oh, and y'all remember that whole CIA crack controversy where they had a war on drugs? But in the 80s, I didn't know anybody who owned crops, land to grow it or any planes with guns or drugs because all of that stuff is flown in. So maybe what the Haitians are saying is happening to them over there is happening to us too. Now I'm about to get more political, but every time when I talk about politics, they want to send me a message. So go to my YouTube so you can see me expose America for the things that they've been doing to other countries and to us. All right, so you made it here to YouTube. Now everything that I'm about to say connected to America. Do y'all remember when I said that Haiti doesn't have no control over the elected officials? And Moise was elected with an extremely low voter turnout, but US backing. In February 2021, Moise refused to step down at the end of his term. The U.S. once again backed him while thousands of Haitian protesters took to the street. Nobody really voted for him, but he still became president. They've been doing this for years. U.S. President Woodrow Wilson's administration invaded Haiti to protect U.S. investments. Then, they forced the election of a new Haitian president who would protect American interests in the country. Racist and fear-mongering rhetoric was used to justify the move. The occupation ensured that the U.S. prioritized its own interests in Haiti over what was best for Haitians. Go watch the full video if you don't believe me. They've been doing this for years. And this is how they know that the Haitian government is involved with the gangs. And the U.S. is helping supply them. The CIA pays off top Haitian thugs. Officials confirmed that he was on the payroll of the American CIA defense. Also staged a fake riot that caused the USS to turn back. And can you imagine winning a war against slavery against your oppressors and they show back up with three times the military strength saying that you need to compensate us for the loss of slaves. Basically, you got to pay us for your freedom because y'all not slaves no more. $21 billion. Do you know how much money that is and how much it took away from their upgrading of their educational system, their living, and everything else that they needed to evolve? And the French government deliberately knew that they weren't able to pay them and take care of their country. And the U.S. swooped in and said, we'll help you with money if you do what we say. They couldn't improve their healthcare system, anything because of what was going on with France. Now that you know exactly what they've been through throughout history and time, you can see why they want to call it gangs and they want to move in more military situations down there because you know that they're not going to stand for this. It don't seem like France is trying to pay back the money that they took from them or help rebuild anything, nothing. They're not helping at all. So y'all take notes from Haiti. We can learn a couple of things. Y'all ain't seen me in a bonnet, but before I go to sleep, I just have to say this because this is not going on TikTok because you know they hella sensitive on there. People will attack you, flag your account, and ban you, all types of things because TikTok just gives them that power. Because next is what y'all about to see is me irritated about the current living Egyptians making money off of the ancient sites and claiming that the ancient Egyptians were their people. And mainstream media has only made Egyptians light-skinned, Arab-looking, saying that they look like this. Now let's compare this situation to America. You don't see Jeffrey saying that he's a Native American and the special artifacts of ancient America is his, even though some of them do. They don't call themselves Native American or ancient Americans. They know they took this land. They know they invaded. But why is it that the Arabs can't admit to that? Just because you're born in Egypt doesn't mean your ancestors are ancient Egyptians. 
Prime example, just because Sarah was born in Africa, when she comes over to the United States, is she going to be labeled as an African-American? Would it be right for her to come over here and say that she's African? I'm pretty sure you've seen this actor in a couple of movies. One of them is The Old Guard. I'm pretty sure y'all seen it. I like it a lot. She was born in South Africa. Is she African though? Is she the same as this goddess right here? This is what I'm trying to get Arabs and Islamic people to understand. Y'all don't even follow the same comedic way of life that is on the walls of Egypt. Y'all follow a whole different religion. If your religion has its own historical timeline since the creation up until now, why doesn't the ancient monuments look different from the ones where y'all originate? Y'all have been marching everywhere. But let's continue. I'm finna go to sleep. This is what the ancient Egyptians would actually look like. Dark-skinned, olive-toned, like myself. You can clearly tell from all their depictions. This accurately depicts me. Studies found that they're closely related to the Middle Eastern regions, such as Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, etc. Leave my pharaohs and my people out of your mouth. Did y'all know that Egypt has centuries and centuries of invasions? I'm just gonna go over four of them. And yes, according to society, when you label your nationality, it is from where you are born. If you were born in Egypt, then that's where you're from. So no disrespect to anyone who lives there now. So first on our list, we have the Assyrian people. Conquered Egypt in 673 BC. Next, we have the Persians. In 525 BC, he invaded Egypt, Cambyses. I don't know how to say his name. Next, we have the Greeks. What conquest was led by Alexander the Great in 332 BC? Next, we have the Muslim conquest, which was in 641 AD. If you go to Egypt today, you're not going to see any black people there. I was trying to see if there is any indigenous Afro people in Egypt, and this is what I got. A lot of black people. Um, so the people that live in those uh, cities mostly come from the Middle East and European countries like Turkey, uh, a lot of Saudi Arabians, um, a lot of just a lot of European and Middle Eastern countries. So if you go to Cairo, if you go to like Morocco or something like that, those people are not going to be black. They're going to be fair skin and look like they're from the Middle East because that's where their great great grandparents and things came from. So yes, there are black people that live in Cairo, there are black people that live in Egypt, but majority of those population of those northern countries are not black. I want to say this before anybody takes this out of context. I am not ignoring the existence of the people who are born in Egypt right now. The analysis is they're not in Egypt anymore. I'm just doing my digging on who were the people there before all of the invasions. There are links to say that they escaped to the southern parts of Africa. They have also found Egyptian temples in America in the Grand Canyon. Egyptian cities and artifacts. I know this app is very sensitive when it comes down to these type of toxics, so that is all I'm going to say. Stay dangerous. I'm about to blow y'all mind because they're literally putting it in our face. So you're telling me we're still denying the existence of melanated Afro people in America pre-Columbus? I hope y'all know what's going on in the Grand Canyon. We have Sphinx statues in the Grand Canyon. Hieroglyphics! Oh, you see that other statue? There is an Egyptian temple named after an Egyptian goddess in the Grand Canyon. I'm pretty sure everybody has seen the Great Seal of California. You see that Amazon warrior who is depicted as white? Well, the original seal of 1510 was an actual melanated Afro woman. And her name was Queen Calafia, hence California. There have been depictions of her in caves, but you know they whitewash everything. I'm gonna let the goddess explain. Calafia was described as a black warrior queen who ruled the mythical island of California. The island was inhibited only by black women who lived like Amazon warriors. Um, what? California could have possibly been ruled by black women? Y'all know Las Vegas, right? That's right next to California and Arizona where the Grand Canyon is. We talked about these Egyptian artifacts, crypts, all of that found in the Grand Canyon. Remember how I said they put it in our face without actually telling us there's a spot in Vegas called Luxor with a pyramid, a sphinx, and Egyptian statues. They also have a museum that shows mock artifacts of Egyptians. I mean, come on. I'ma just show you an up close and personal picture. We also got skulls that resemble Afro people found in pre-Columbus layers in Mexico and Texas. 
and you can say oh maybe they just wanted to build it right there just because but in all honesty i'm not going for that every monument that's placed everywhere has a specific reason why it's there there is sacred geometry and architecture that they don't want to tell us specific places like washington dc they put them in specific areas for a reason so i'm not going for this i want to know what y'all think though because all of this is not adding up but it's adding up so stay dangerous and keep your first eye 